Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to do the third installment of my avoiding or fixing uh, halos during the HDR process. Now, I do listen to people when they comment. Uh, there was an individual who commented on my YouTube channel and asked me if I could do the same thing with NYX, NYX HDR Effects Pro, because I did a tutorial on how to fix halos during tone mapping in Photomatix Pro, I also did how to fix them in Photoshop. And, and pretty much you just want to avoid them all together. If you can avoid them in the front side during your HDR processing, you'll be you'll have a much easier time during the post processing. So here we are in Nick HDR Effects Pro 2. And I'm just going to show you a couple tips and tricks and things that I stay away from in order to avoid haloing altogether. So this is the original image brought into Nick HDR Effects Pro. So the first thing I do before I even go up to tone compression and method strength is get the HDR method, the kind of like the baseline that I want to work with here. Um, these little dots are kind of annoying to work with, but uh, used in combination with one another, they're, they're, you can come up with a lot of different uh, things. This is typically where I find myself normal for the depth, the detail is usually a little bit accentuated, and the drama is natural. Now, you'll start to see halos coming about even when you get into just the the accentuated area here. Um, so, if you look right here along the edge of the tree, you'll see a halo. We can zoom in a little bit. So, that's the start of haloing. It's also starting to halo right above these trees. If I take the detail and go from accentuated to realistic, I start to lose that haloing. So, it's not as bad as, say, something like detailed, where you really start to see that haloing happen. And these are very small halos. Um, some of these halos are, are much larger on, on different images. Um, and then it gets even worse into the grungy area and then adding the strong effect to it and then if you even increase the method strength you're really destroying the photograph um, and and not really making HDR you're making pretty much gross uh, gross photography here so we're gonna go ahead and move that down to about the 50 percent range and keep this at the accentuated mark I may move this down to realistic in a second it depends on some of the other things that I come up with so then I'm going to bounce up here to tone compression and see what happens as I compress the tones a little bit more and a little bit less to see what is, is leaving my HDR image with. Now that's way too much tone compression. I'm starting to lose it in the tree area. So I'm going to move that down probably into the negatives actually so I can keep some of the tone that was there in the original. Now the method strength, the higher you go with this, the stronger your method is going to be down here so whatever you did down here it's going to kind of boost it up a little bit I'm going to go ahead and keep that a little bit lower than 50 percent actually the higher I move it the more accentuated detail it gets and I'm going to show you what slider can affect that in a second here so as I move on down I'm going to just check out my tonality at this point again I'm still keeping my eye on those halos to make sure they don't get unnatural and, and gross on me so it looks like it needs a little Boost. Um, I'm gonna go with maybe like a plus two percent. I mean nothing nothing crazy. Then I'm gonna address my shadows. Now during any tone mapping process, I say this all the time, you start to flatten your image. And by flat I mean everything if you were to turn this into a black and white photograph, everything would be pretty much be fifty percent gray. That's not what we want. We want defined black areas and defined white areas. So I'm gonna do that by dropping my shadows down a little bit to bring out some of that area in the tree. And then I'm going to address my highlights. And it looks like some of the tone compression that happened in here started to destroy some natural highlights that were happening in that area. It's okay to accept highlights. It's okay to blow them too, because highlights do blow in the uh, in in the real world when you're looking at that scene. It's an it's a natural occurrence. So don't have any fear if you increase your highlights. I'm actually going to increase them quite a bit because that is the area where the sun is about to come up. I want to accentuate that. I want to bring that out. I don't want to flatten this out. I don't want to compress the tone so much that I've lost all hope for what's what's supposed to be black and what's supposed to be white. So now I'm going to move down here to contrast. And when it comes to contrast, I like to just take that slider and, and slam it back and forth and then just kind of find something in between that just kind of works for me until my eyes adjust to what I like. Um, 
it's just one of those little things that I do you don't have to do it per se and about the 50% thing looks about right you can adjust it normally I like to just slide it back and forth to see right where it falls right where I like so then there's the blacks and the whites you can modify the blacks and whites in a more extreme way than just shows and highlights um, I tend to keep these pretty stable especially for this photograph now some some photographs might need it more than others this one I'm just gonna go ahead and keep the way it is as far as structure is concerned structure is another way to add detail to the photograph but as you add structure you also start to add the, that haloing area in the in and around areas of high contrast to low contrast like tree lines to skies so you got to be careful with the structure now it can be used to uh, push that a little bit further your your tone mapping a little bit further or it can be used to kind of help out those um, halo you have there so I'm gonna actually drop down the structure just a little bit and see where that leads me there actually I'll go ahead and I'll show you something else. I'm gonna put that about 25%. I'm gonna keep those halos along that tree line. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix that because to me, when I look at this photograph, the only place that those halos really pop are right along that sideline area. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that in a second here. So now I'm gonna move on down to my color. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the saturation just a little bit because everything out of Nick always needs a little bit more saturation. It does such a good job with it too. So put that at about 15%. Again, this is another one of those things that you can kind of move back and forth and see. Once those oranges start to start to hit you in the gut a little bit, you can go ahead and drop that down a little bit. Anytime you see one color that's just pushing a little bit farther than the other ones, go ahead and drop it down. Then I'm going to move my way down to the temperature slider. Now this is already a pretty warm photograph because of those oranges. If I move it up any higher, it, it just gets a little too warm. When in actuality, there was actually quite a bit of blue in the sky. Because again, it was a sunrise. And typically when you transition from a sunrise to a sunset, the area above tends to be uh, really blue because that was a night sky. And the sun is coming up into that. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a little bit. And then for the tint, um, again, I'm gonna increase that a little bit, just to give it a little bit more magenta as that sun was coming up. So how I'm gonna fix that area along the side? Well, let's first look at where we are right now. So we've come quite a, a long way. Now we still have a lot of haloing that we have to deal with here along that tree line. So I'm gonna do that with the control points. So I'm gonna add a control point here and then see what happens when I go down to method strength and move that down and I'll make that a lot smaller too so it only affects basically that tree line alright so now I'm going to take the selective adjustments and turn it off and turn it back on so I can see the tailing area get a little bit smaller um, again I'm going to drop that method strength a little bit more see what happens there we can go ahead and zoom in and see what's happening as we take off that selective adjustment so if you look there's that haloing edge that actually looks more like it came from a chromatic aberration fix more than, let's say, a halo. But let's turn the selective adjustments back on and watch what happens. You see that tree line where that was more than likely a natural halo area rather than a fixed chromatic aberration. It's actually starting to fix itself. So what I can do is use the control points to help avoid haloing along this tree line where it's extremely obvious that there's a halo. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that control point by going down right down here and then move that on over to this side of the tree. And then I can follow that along this, uh, the tree line area, moving that method strength down. I'm gonna duplicate it again and put it up against this tree. Now I don't want to just um, um, go into the control point and blast out its area because then it's gonna ruin everything around it. I don't want that to happen. I want it to just be along those edges. So a lot of times where you'd see someone take one of those control points and use it to their advantage by adjusting a large area at one time, I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm just going to move it right up against this tree line. And I might need to manipulate the method strength as I go along the tree line too. So if we turn off these selective adjustments and turn them back on, you can see that haloing layer area is getting a lot better. So I'm just going to click off somewhere and maybe the uh, 
tint section. Let's see what happens here when I pull this out to 25%. So I'll just click off of there so I can't see it. Turn them off, turn them back on. That haloing area is getting much better around those areas. And again, I can keep duplicating these control points here to make sure that I get rid of that haloing along this edge of, oops, that's exposure slider. Don't do that. We don't want to do that. I'm just going to go ahead because I don't really know where that was. I'm going to press and delete. And I'm just going to duplicate that one again. And again, this is this is a very long and tedious process in order to fix this, but this is what we do as HDR photographers or even any photographer for that matter. And drop that method strength down. These little sliders are kind of a pain to deal with. But you see that dramatically decreased that halo that is right there along that edge. All right, so there's some awesome other things that we can do with these control points. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave those control points where they are. And if you are following along with this and you're doing this on your own photograph, you can continue to roll those control points all along that, that side there. Now, for, for the sake of the tutorial and moving on, I'm just going to go ahead and play with some more control points. So for this, I want to bring out some more stuff in the sky. You saw here how I decreased the method strength in order to reduce the halos. Let's see what happens when I increase the method strength right here in the sky. I can start to get some of that gritty edge in the clouds, but not take them too far. Now, I can here too. And then I can increase the temperature, whether I want that warmer or whether I want that to be a little bit cooler. And I can also do that with the tint as well. Bring that nice and close to that area. That's nice. All right, I'm gonna duplicate that and bring that over to here. See what happens. And then maybe duplicate that again and bring that over to here. Let's see what happens here. So I'm really starting to push this a little bit. So I'm gonna drop that saturation just a little bit because I like to keep my saturation at bay and under control. And let's see what happens when I drop that method strength a little bit. Let me increase the contrast, decrease the contrast, see what happens. Well, a little bit of decreased contrast works out pretty well. Now, in this area, you can see that there is quite a bit of tone compression happening that does not look very good. Let me get my navigator going on here. There's some tone compression happening in here that doesn't look very good. When zoomed in really close, you can't really tell very well, but when zoomed out, you can see that there's a tone compression issue right here where this orange area looks almost like a, a milky uh, effect. So I'm going to take a control point, I'm going to put it right there, and then I'm going to drop that method strength there, see what happens, and then maybe increase my whites, yep, that's going to help, and then also maybe increase, um, let me decrease the structure, increase the structure. Again, a lot of this is just kind of trial and error to see what's going to happen when I do this. Maybe decrease saturation a little bit, that kind of helps too. So if I turn these control points off, you can see the difference there helps out a lot that's an area that meant to that was meant to be blown out um, but it didn't quite get blown out because of the tone mapping process so I'm gonna add one more control point right up here um, actually I'm gonna show you something else before I do that I'm gonna add one more control point right down here and see what happens when I increase the exposure a little bit right along that edge line and then let me go ahead and increase the whites. Nope, don't like that. And don't like increased structure either. Well, we'll just leave it the way it is. That, that looks pretty good. So there's something also in here that's really great. Um, the graduated neutral density. It's going to help out in the top area. Now I've gone a little farther beyond just showing you how to fix halos in a photograph. Uh, in Nick HDRFX Pro, which is because it's so much fun to play with. So this upper tonality, I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And immediate uh, graduated filters up here. That's really, really cool. I really like that. And the lower tonality, we can make it darker or lighter. And then we can fix the blend a little bit so that they blend a little bit more or a little bit less. I want them to blend a little bit more so it's a more natural blend from one to the other. So let's see our before and after. So here's our before, here's our after. 
that we can still keep pushing this a little bit more. There's some other color temperature issues here that I'm not a big fan of. If I were to go into the control points and hit this tree and then go ahead and maybe drop the saturation a little bit because I don't like how blue the tree looks. So drop the saturation a little bit, maybe increase the temperature of just the tree. These control points are really finicky so that that tree is no longer a bluish uh, shadow, it's more of a warm shadow. I could keep going with this. Uh, the main point was to avoid the halos altogether. Use the control points to help avoid those halos and bring it back up to the very top of where we started in all this. Make sure you don't take your HDR method too far. If I were to go even further with this, you'd see that even after all the work I've done, the halos are still there. So you can mitigate your halos by just making sure you don't take the HDR method too far and also watch your tone compression and your method strength. Again, this is EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and have a great weekend.